Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the Simply walk the What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Simply Walk the Talk. I'm in New York City. I'm in the middle of a tour right now, but I happen to be home for a few days, so I'm excited. Although it is very, very hot, but maybe not quite as hot as where my next guest is calling in from. So we have on the show Kristen Kristen Weitzel. Am I saying your last name correctly? Yeah, you are. Ooh. Okay. So um, that's Kristen's voice. If you haven't um, figured that out by now, if you're just listening, if you're watching, thanks for watching. Kristen is a nutrition specialist, certified fitness trainer, advanced breath work instructor, cold exposure coach, and overall high performance maven. She combines her deep professional experience and personal journey dedicated to self-optimization with her work coaching females into the most powerhouse version of themselves. So this is not just a podcast for women, but you're definitely going to get a lot for those women that are listening and watching out there, okay? Now, in addition to transforming the bodies and minds of her clients, Kristen speaks at numerous wellness conferences worldwide, ran her own fitness studio, and develops international online programs to help people achieve their health goals. As a progressive voice, host of the Well Power podcast, and global brand ambassador for FlexBeam, she questions how far the human body can go and helps people take them there. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be chatting and um, reconvening with you, as it were, uh, since the yeah. last time we saw you in person, which is now years ago. But I know that, um, you know, when you talk about health optimization, you're also the man with the plan. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's it's cool to meet people like yourself, because I, I can recall when we first met, it was in LA. And, um, and you know, it's like when you meet someone that is that is kind of on the same trajectory or the same vibe it just feels good and um and so I'm, I'm actually really happy to see your face even though we're um several thousand miles apart mm-hmm. uh, or 100 miles apart i guess um but yeah it's, it's really cool to see you again and i'm excited to talk with you because i've been watching your content you've been crushing it um as mm-hmm. expected and um i think instead of kind of going into your background because we did that very long intro um Instead of going into your background, let's talk about the very reason why we're here today. Yeah. Um, that, that reason is because you happen to be a global ambassador for a device called the Flex Beam. And yeah. if you're any of my clients or followers, you probably have heard me talk about it and you probably have one for yourself. So Kristen is going to tell us all about the Flex Beam and then we'll go into some of the other things she does. So let's start there. What is the Flex Beam? Yeah, for sure. Uh, The FlexBeam is a super rad device that is around the world of red light therapy. The thing that um, some of your listeners may or may not know that I always like to fly out to 10,000 feet and say, the world of light therapy and healing light wavelengths is called photobiomodulation, right? Everyone's always like big nerdy science term, but that doesn't have to be unapproachable. Just photobiomodulation is the umbrella. And underneath that uh, lives a multitude of colors in the way we can use their wavelengths of light for therapeutic and health benefits. But that red light therapy is one of those types and probably the most popular. I mean, I bet you'd agree. It's like the most popular type. We're seeing it prevalent more and more now people with, you know, panels and face masks and all these different red light devices. And FlexBeam is a device that is this portable targeted. I have one in white. It's like white or black and gray. Um, But it is a portable targeted red light therapy device. And what's cool about that and what's different about that from some of the other devices in the world is um, it's I'm on the road. I know I'm preaching to the choir when I speak to you, but I'm on the road all the time. 
my clients live all over the world. And, um, you know, there's between like budgets and being able to carry something with me. I certainly can't like get a red light panel in my suitcase or curl up with it in bed at night when I'm trying to get my down regulation on. So the thing that's cool about the device is that it is, it goes with you anywhere. And it sort of looks like, um, it comes in a case that looks like a flute, a flute case. So it's, yes. it's not, uh, it's not portable. I'm I'm actually holding mine up. So uh yeah, well, yeah. Case, that is. If if you're watching this, you have a treat in seeing this, right? Flex beam. It looks really cool. It's a nice material. And you are spot on by saying it looks like a flute case. I, I love that. Yeah. And then that houses. So she has the white one. Kristen has the white one and I have the gray one. Yes, I've left my little tag on because I want it has like to... directions on it for settings, which exactly. is like really good. Exactly. I keep my, I kept my tag on until the little metal chain broke. Cause I was like, this is, if someone just picks it up and they're like, I want to use this at least, and I'm not around, then at least it's like, here's what you set it on and here's how you use it. Um, it's really exactly. easy to use. Like, you know, that already it's, um, there's three different settings and each setting is setting one, two, and three. Each setting is a slight deeper depth, depth of penetration into the skin. Um, setting three, being able to, uh, you know, your shoulders and your hips and stuff, you can get all the way through to the bone, which is really, you know, there's, there, there are different things we may be using the settings for. Like uh, first setting might be more around like scar tissue. It's very superficial in the sense that we're using it on a place where there's injury or surgery and, you know, recovering some scar tissue. Even from the past, we, we hear about users um, giving testimonials that their skin is just looking better and their mitochondrial function is, is, is helping that body self heal those scarred areas. And then setting two and setting three, we get deeper and deeper into the skin. And um, we have a combination of red light and near infrared light. Um, and again, like flying out, we talk about far infrared light. That's like what people have in quite often a red light sauna, which is creating heat. This is different than that. This is about near infrared light and red light. Some of it visible to the eye, some of it not. Really in the healing properties of those different wavelengths of light that are in the device. What I super dig is I don't have to be plugged into a wall. I can charge it, take it on the go. I can use it before the gym. I can use it after. I can um, like use it with clients, right? This is what you and I do. We're on the road with people and we wanna be able to help them recover. Um, training athletes, training musicians, training uh, every client that we have, man, woman, and maybe child, you know? So red light therapy is undeniably a thing. There is enough science and evidence. You know, Josh and I could talk about this entire, you know, the body of science and, and everybody would fall asleep listening to this, but there is <laughs> absolutely um, easy to find uh, science and double blind, you know, well reputed studies around the benefits of red light therapy for overall well being, for boosting our cellular health and creating a cascade of effects in the body that's just help us heal, help us move and work better and live longer. And, and it's, it's a beautiful thing to see, to see all these studies, like they're on animals, they're on humans, they're on, and, and just knowing that we've been playing with red light, either via sunlight or some other type of laser for a long time, like an LED, um, non-invasive laser for a long time. And now there's a device that I can take with me everywhere I go. Yeah. I, I really, well, one, appreciate you going through all that because I do think it's helpful for the, for the person who just doesn't quite know the difference between something you can get on, let's say, Amazon or something you can get just, you know, for that looks similar to another product, but maybe half the price or a lot cheaper. Um, yeah. But I am also very similar to you in that I truthfully believe in the the power of red light therapy, right? Or the power of light therapy in general. And like you, I could not fit, nor did I want to run the risk of breaking some of these other devices because they're expensive, right? Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of these light panels that I did travel with for a little bit that did break. And yeah. it's like, it's super difficult trying to get them to like reimburse you for it or they run out of the product. And, and so when you had mentioned to me, I think I first saw the flex beam uh, from your page. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, I yeah. think I happened to see it on your Instagram a while back. Um, and then, you know, we had kind of talked about it. And it wasn't until a client asked me because, you know, a lot of my clients are like, well, Josh, uh, what's what's the best device for traveling? And I was like, oh, um, what is the name of that that one device that Kristen had? So I had to go to your Instagram and I'm like, oh, this is it. And yeah. we ended up going down the path of, of getting it. So for those people who are on the go quite a bit, and even if you're not on the go, let's face it, if you want to have something 
very powerful, but also portable, this is the thing to go for, for sure. Yeah. And you said this really important thing, which is, and, and I get this a lot with people who come to me to just ask questions or maybe clients or partners of clients where they're like, yo, I went on Amazon and I bought this red light bulb and I have it plugged in and I'm doing the thing. Even like a close friend of mine just said recently, I got this amazing bulb from a great place. I have it. And I know that there's a protocol for my testicles to boost testosterone and I'm using it. And I was like, <laughs> is it an LED diode or is it a, is it a bulb? Like, and it was, it turned out it was a bulb. Thankfully he's telling me in the early days, but it's a bulb of um, you know, a heat, like basically the heat version of red light, right? So it's like far infrared and then like, you don't want to be putting your sweet little jewels on <laughs> or near the infrared heat like that. So it's, even if he was doing a shorter protocol, that's like not the dream. So we like to keep that air of the body cool, generally speaking. So, I mean, yes. I don't know, but I am imagining and that's what I, I can vouch for that. Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. And so I was like, it's just sort of like, no, how, I want people to have a little bit of understanding and awareness around the category. And it may not even be that you order, you might've ordered an LED red light therapy thing from Amazon. It's from XYZ producer. And this is not to shun anyone that's producing it. But what people need to know is you can buy cheap slash even LED lights that are bad for you. So if you buy one that's like from a non-reputable company or like a no name weird brand and you don't know where it's coming from and it's odd packaging or they, they're not, this is important. They're not like transparent on their website on what the wavelengths of light are or that they're using good diodes. Any company worth their salt will be like, this is what we're using. And yeah. um, so just to be careful, you know, if you're if you're getting a really good deal, $50 for a red light panel or something that you like wear on that's like under a hundred bucks, the chances are you get what you pay for. It's probably not very good. Yeah. Yeah. And for sure, there, there's something that you brought up that I think is also uh, important as we're kind of and, and I, I don't want listeners to think that this is a commercial for Flexbeam. It just, it just happens to be a situation in which both of us are really excited about this. And as you, most of you know, who follow the show, I try to do whatever I can to like really talk in depth about some of the products that I use because I'm doing this with my clients and they have firsthand information and knowledge on someone who's actually spending all of their hard earned money to, to test out and vet out some of these products. So if I'm suggesting it, if Kristen's suggesting it, chances are it's been it's been vetted, right? Um, so so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. But when you started to talk about uh, protocols and length of time and things like that, it reminded me to ask you about the the timing and the protocols with with the flex beam because I thought that is really cool. Like it, it, it when you get the product, it's very very detailed in 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 like how much time you should use it, how many rounds, where to place it, blah, blah, blah. So can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. And the, and the reality of this is in the conversation you and I are having, and I don't know if it would be the first tool you recommend, but when people are transitioning into the next level of their health optimization and they're like, okay, I have some food is kind of on lockdown and you know, I'm having some treats, but I'm doing good and fitness is on lockdown. I'm getting mobility and movement and all the things that you and I know and love to be important at baselines. And I'm getting sleep. Okay, cool. When they're like, I want to get the juicy fun. What's the toy? What's the first piece of tech to optimize my health? I'm like, yo, the answer is red light therapy. It is completely for a number of reasons. And one of the big reasons is you are going to spend some money on it, whether it's a panel or a face mask or a flex beam or anything, you're going to spend some money on it. And then the whole family can use it or your friends can use it. And this is the other thing is like, I get so much usage out of the flex beam and the people who I know, love and trust and my clients and my friends are like, yo, let me throw on the flex beam while we're watching this movie or whatever. And that's, yep. that's really nice, right? You can do that. So, so the power of relay therapy is the first suggested biohacking tool that someone adopts in my opinion is like, that's the greatest value you can create for your systemically for your body. Um, so that's really important. And then the protocol things are really the pieces of the protocols that are in there are really structured and set up for this uh, point of differentiation, I would say, with FlexBeam versus other devices, right? So I'm going to compare these things. It doesn't mean that you can't use other devices as well, but you want to have a protocol that works for what you are looking to do for the body. Mm -hmm. And part of the protocols that we have set up are because we know, we know because the FlexBeam is set up, not everybody can see this, but it has a specific overlay over the diode. So there's a very specific measurement 
on how far the red light is from your skin. And you put the device is designed to put on your skin. That's very different than a panel. Uh, and that is different because when a panel is plugged into a wall, if you're super close to the device, it can be harmful in the sense of EMF, right? So electric magnetic field. Uh, that's a whole nother podcast for another day. But because we are not plugged in and we don't have any EMF, you can put it on the skin. And when you go back to looking at the research and the clinical trials and the things that everybody has used red light for, most of the research that is getting the best results is within close proximity to the skin. But many companies tell the consumers from a safety standpoint, four to six inches, four to eight inches away, because they don't want you to be getting the benefit of red light and then blowing yourself up with EMF at the same time. Right, so, right. so that's like a big, the reason we can protocol this and we can dose it, if you will, is we know the distance, you're putting it on your skin, it's set for a setting of 10 minutes, and then we tell you based on what's going on in that area, you use setting one, two, or three. So it's, it's simple it's and yeah. it's effective and we don't have a lot of room for user error because we've done a lot in the vacuum to make it easy for people. That is brilliant, Kristen, honestly. And I, I'm not saying this to, to pull your leg, but like I, I knew there had to be a reason behind the, the, the protocol. And as soon as you started explaining the, um, the fact that it goes on the skin as sort of the basis of understanding the protocols, I immediately yeah. got it because I'm like, ah, that means they know exactly the distance everyone is using it. Whereas with these other devices, they have to tell you, well, if you're within six inches and 12, and it's like, who's literally measuring how far they are and you can kind of guess it, but then you got to worry about like, okay, like should this area not be so close? And it's just um, too many variables. But when you have the flex being directly on your skin, you know exactly what the what what it, what it is. <laughs> totally, and yeah. like I don't want to talk about testicles the whole podcast, but in that example, like if we're just talking about like using a panel or using something, those areas you don't want to get the like your face, right? Like we don't really recommend that you put the flex being directly on your face. Number one, it would be uncomfortable and awkward. Number two, your facial skin along with your genital skin are it's very very different. So we say you know. We're cautious about utilization of that. Another thing is we have eyeballs, which are the brain, part of the brain that's outside the head or outside of the skull, the cranium. And so let's be cautious about that. There are tools that are made with a gentler red light. However, you could put the flex beam sort of like hanging around like a long necklace and get some of that reflection. And it's a bit more tender, right? Your skin is more tender there. So you can utilize the protocol that way. But that being said, if you sat down, like not that you would ever do this, and we have Ben Greenfield to probably thank for this, is like if you sat down and straddled your red light device or your panel, you could do damage to yourself. And so um, it's not all about just that part of the body, but it's like understanding what the usage is. And then the opposite of that, and this is like a little nerdy science, but it's great for people to hear this one piece of nerdy science because I think it can come in handy, right? When I learned it, I was like, oh, it's a tidbit I can share is the inverse square law. So we hear on in the media, when we hear people talk about you know cell phones, it's like the cell phone next to your face is not great. Those earbuds maybe not so great because they're in your head because you are so close to what's happening with EMF on the phone. And if you put the phone on the table and you have uh, like a tube system or you have something else, like the further away we get, the less harmful it is. And so with red light therapy, the opposite is true in, in some sense, meaning if we want the red light to be effective, the rays and the wavelengths of light that are good light, we want to get into our body. So we have to be close enough. And the reason I say that is if you're out there in the world and you're listening to this podcast and you have a panel of any variety and it's plugged in in the corner of your room or you see on a website for any kind of red light company, there's a beautiful woman laying down on a couch. There's a red light panel that's, you know, 20 feet away. The truth is it's not doing anything. You have to be in that underfoot range. And you want to be not so close that you're like on the panel. And so that's exactly what you're saying, Joshua. It's like, what, what's the protocol? How do I go? Am I on the phone? Am I, am I close enough? Am I too far? Am I getting benefit? If you're going to spend the money, you better get the benefit. Right. And so in right. square law, like be nerdy and drop it on your friends. And then you can be the smart one in the crew for, for real life therapy. Exactly. And I'll give you another one, not quite as nerdy, but uh, <laughs> if you want to remember, an easy way to remember not to put this on your face is like, would you really want this the, the device that goes on your balls to also go on your face? No. <laughs> no, that's the answer there. So anyway... <laughs> 
<laughs> and ladies, I use it all over. Like I use it around my waist as tactile feedback for breath work. I use it across the top of my chest to downregulate when I'm stressed or when I'm trying to sleep at night. Sometimes I use it across the spine, which is really beautiful because the flex beam goes both vertically and horizontally based on where you move the bands. So you could put it on your shin to help repair up and down the shin, something going on there, or you could wrap it around your tennis elbow. It doesn't have to be lengthwise or it could, it, it's very flexy bendy. And so that's kind of a cool, a cool piece of it too. So we just, we put it in all the different body parts and it works functionally that way. And you can look, I can make a smoothie wearing it. I can like go and uh, I can do my admin, my work. I can be on a computer call and be wearing it, all of those things. And that just makes it really a nice way to stack the hacks. If you don't have the opportunity to be like, chill out and wear it. Right. Yeah. So then uh, let me just ask you really quick. And then I promise we, we can move on from the discussion of uh, flex beam, but um, what, so like, it, let's say I have a, a, an issue that I really want to just hang out and, and take care of, and I want to lay down. And the fact that you can strap this on your body, chances are you can kind of leave it there. Um, yeah. So would I be able to just like let it run like overnight kind of thing? Or how does that work? Yeah, so it's always set on 10 minute cycles. And there, there's a point of diminishing returns. And so by that, I just mean, if you have an injury, let's just use like maybe you had um, uh, knee surgery on one of your knees, right? Let's just make an example or like tennis elbow, like right? surgery is going to be more uh, challenging to recover from in a slight bit longer than maybe tennis elbow or tennis elbow could be chronic. In either one of those situations, you're going to want to put the flex beam on the joint and run it for 10 minutes for a cycle. And you may want to do that two times a day for that tennis elbow thing or every day once a day for something that feels a little more chronic to like slowly help the cells improve so your body can heal. And if you have the surgical thing and you're really, it's it's a new, it's a fresh wound or whatever's happening there, you may want to use it up to two or three times a day separated over the course of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or like wake up, go to sleep somewhere in the middle, something like that. Using it more or using it long term or just continuing to turn it on and on and on again is really like you read a, reach a point of diminishing returns because the body's going to absorb the light. Your body is a battery. Essentially, your cells are built from electrons. This is why grounding works in the world. These wavelengths of light, which penetrate the skin, even though we can't see it, it penetrates the skin and it's healing us at a cellular cellular level. So we can utilize it like that. And then the body needs some time to 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 work and heal and take that energy in and and just jamming ourselves with red light all day long is like you know sunrise and sunset have these wavelengths of light that can help us as well and some of that circadian rhythm based but when we are taking in the red light we just we wouldn't be standing in the sun all day we wouldn't be taking um taking in red light and doing our body a service at that point we need to like give it some time Everything we want is always yesterday. And the reality is mm -hmm. it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Take it slow. And that's where we always see the best results. It's more about frequency and adhering to getting it in every day, every other day. And so that there's a frequency that you're using it several times a week on the targeted area, maybe a little more, you know, daily or a couple of times a day on an area that's more intensely in pain or has muscle aches, et cetera, to recover it. And then we move on from there. We have our life. We get awesome. our life back. We don't have to be glued to the red light, anything. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. Thank you for that. Um, you know, and on, honestly, this brings us to dun, da, 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 the Pomodoro break of the episode. So um, for those of you that are new to the show, I recently started adding in a Pomodoro break so that we can undo and get out of these sedentary moments, whether you're sitting, standing, or doing anything for a long period of time. We want to kind of break that up. And as most of you know, by now, uh, Pomodoro break is usually if I, I don't like to be dogmatic about anything, but it usually is like every 20, 20 to 30 minutes and can last up to five minutes. So we're going to give you a little taste of uh, what Kristen has prepared for the Pomodoro break for today's episode. So take yeah, it. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. So the, the thing I wanted to say to anyone who's listening right now, if you're in a car and you're driving and you don't have the opportunity to... Um, pull over for a moment, then I just want you to like save this for later or just we're going to do some beautiful breathing. And um, while I'm breathing, I have the flex beam set on setting two and um, it would run for 10 minutes. We're just going to do a couple minutes. So it's setting two and it's on the back side of my 
body and spine above my hips because I was doing some trampoline work recently and I'm a little bit tight in my hips today. So like that upper hip crest uh, feels like it needs a little love. Um, and the other cool thing is that it's wrapped around my waist. So as I breathe, I can sort of feel my breath patterns better. Um, so Josh was doing the same thing. And I'm gonna do mine um, in the front. I thought I could get him to take his shirt off, but whatever. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, my mom watches this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I have well, a disclaimer guess- at the end of my podcast for my mom too. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to settle in in this moment. I am. Um, I'm going to stay standing, I think, but I, there's a chair behind me. Just like if you have a little chair or if you're actually comfortable and it's available to you and you want to like lay down on the floor, then you could sit or you can lay on the floor. And what we're going to do is you're just going to listen to my guidance and follow along with the breath. We are going to take this moment to de-stress whatever Josh wants to do. He's allowed to do. I'm going to I'm gonna um, sit in this seat that I have. In this right chair. Now. Perfect. So if you're sitting in a chair, you want your feet flat on the ground, not cross-legged. And if you have the uh, beautiful opportunity to be laying on the ground, you can have your legs extended or your feet flat on the floor and knees up, whatever feels comfortable for your back, your neck, your body. And we're just going to take a couple minutes while I'm going to set a timer so that we are all on the same page. And we're going to take a couple minutes to breathe together. And what I'm asking for everyone to do is to gently close their lips together. So seal your lips and just breathe for the next couple of minutes in and out through the nose while I give you some guidance. So as you're breathing here for your own count of four on the inhale and slowing your breath for your own count of four on the exhale, I want you to set yourself up to take the next inhale to a full 100, maybe 110% breath. So you're breathing everything in all the way to the top. So inhaling through the nose now, all the way in, all the way in, all the way into the top until we get to that biggest, fullest breath, chest is full, and then exhaling long, even, and easy out the nose. And let's just call that your 100% breath. And now on the next inhale, I want you to breathe half as full. So just breathe to 50%. What does that feel like? Can you feel the ribs expand to the side, back of the chair, into the floor, slowing down the heart rate, and then exhaling all the way out? Let's just take one more of those half inhale. So 50% full, maybe just your belly, ribs expand, shoulders are soft. All through the nose, exhaling. And now bringing that breath down to 25%. So we are working ourselves down to a little bit of a light breathing pattern. Maybe we want to breathe more, but we don't do that yet. We are sending all this beautiful oxygen into our tissues and our body. Now we're reducing the breath, continuing to breathe this entire time, never holding your breath, just slow, even, easy inhales, easy exhales. Just reducing that breath to maybe like 10%, right? So this is like a secret breath. You're just breathing calmly in a low frequency per minute. Maybe just feel your belly inside of the ribs, tiny bit moving, but... If someone walked in the room, they might have thought you fell asleep. You fell asleep. Just for another 30 seconds, we're going to reduce the amount of air we're taking in through the nose slowly. And out through the nose. Really now breathing so lightly, so secretly that we are creating a little air hunger. Like we want to breathe more, but we're just not going to for 15 more seconds. We're just going to. Reduce the breath, not a breath hold, just slow breaths. Noticing where your mind is, noticing where your energy is, knowing there's plenty of oxygen in your system, there's no need to stress. And then on the count of 10, when we get to the bottom of 10, keeping that air hunger, nine, eight, seven, when we get to one, we will be able to take a big, juicy, delicious breath. It's three, two, one. And now you can fill your lungs, take in as much air, inhale, exhale. Feel the expansion, feel the difference in the small breath to the large breath. Knowing that in this last two and a half, three minutes now, we just settled ourselves in. We oxygenated our tissues, we increased our focus, we calmed our state. Hopefully you feel a little better from this Pomodoro break. 
Wow. First of all, first of all, thank you for that. And my goodness, um, I almost fell asleep. That's how relaxed I got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I'm like nice and that. warm. It's a hundred degrees out. I'm like nice and warm. I'm like, oh. got my flex beam on. It's interesting to do standing and obviously talking makes nasal breathing hard, but yeah, just yeah, as yeah. a note to people, it's a really beautiful practice to um, just do that three to five minutes a few times a week. I mean, if you're really gung ho about le learning to breathe into bettering your body and your health, the less stressed we are, the better that we recover, the more we recover. I always say this thing my, da my mentor, Dan Garner, says, which is we are only as fit as what we can recover from. Mm. And part of recovery is, is to get down regulated. And also in that exercise specifically, as we're driving air hunger, we're actually oxygenating the tissues more. So we're keeping ourselves like even and easy, but focus is high. And, um, you know, we can be in rest, digest, socialize and have sex mode. So it's really a, a nice breathing practice. That's that secret breathing, which is um, it's adopted from something by Patrick McEwen called um, Breathe Light to Breathe Right. Yeah, I, I love Patrick McEwen's work. Um, I'm currently reading among a couple other books at the same time, but I'm currently reading The Breathing Cure by Patrick McEwen. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, and I love incorporating uh, and or trying to improve upon uh, my Bolt score, which is, as you know, mm -hmm. the body oxygen level test. And um, I really like that. And in fact, are you familiar with Hanu? Are you also testing Hanu right now? Hanu Health? I'm testing Hanu right now. Yeah. yeah. And I want to say <laughs> the funny quick story, which is, the first day I got it, I was like, amazing. I said, okay, I don't sleep with it. I'm going to put it on first in the morning. I had a big training I was running. I wore it the whole day, even though I was doing a training. I was like so stoked. I came home at night, nine o'clock before bed, went to be like, I'm going to check my data. And I never had opened the app. So it didn't start the thing. So I wore it all day long and got no data on day one. But yes, I am wearing that. the Hanu. <laughs> I've, I've so done that. So it's so funny that I'm not the only one. So thank you for sharing that. Um, cause I did the same thing. And to be, to be honest with you, I started reading, started really diving into the breathing cure around the same time that I started testing Hanu beta testing. Um, and I know there's a few of us out there like, like you and I that are also doing the beta testing. Um, and for me, I kind of thought it was like a one, one and done thing. I thought it was like, Oh, you test it, you know what it is and maybe check in. But as I've been doing more research on it, I'm realizing like, no, you should wear it for long periods of time. And that's when I encountered that first thing you're talking about, which is, you know, forgetting to open the app so it can, it knows to like connect to the, to the device on your chest and, you know, whatever. But yeah, yeah. it's, it is really cool and you can do your. It's awesome. It has all the, it has all the oxygen, like your scores, breathing, it's so great yeah. um, to be able to connect those dots. And that book you just mentioned, The Breathing Cure especially for females or just anyone in relationship there's or, or even out of relationship the thing that's amazing about that book is it's a little less technical and researchy than his um his original book the oxygen advantage which is a lot more dense and for women there's two chapters on women and breathing that's very specific to how it's different for us during our reproductive years meaning like different times of the month when we have our period still is different ways we breathe and different ways we can t uptake oxygen both better and worse and just different than men, you know? So that's really cool. And then there's two chapters on sex and breathing in there. And so um, it's nice departure to read about some of those things. You know, Patrick was just on my podcast and he's a little more introverted. So I didn't talk too much about those chapters, but there's, he has a lot of like trials in there and people trying things and like, you don't even have to be with a partner. I imagine you can just different ways to breathe when you're um, having intimate time. So that's cool. <laughs> that's very cool. Uh, one, congrats on getting him, him on your show. I, I, I need to go and check that out because um, that's, a, you know, it's a big name and I really love his work. And I've had the great fortune of being able to work closely with um, Anders Olsen, who you probably know. And he yeah. was a big part of the book Breath by James Nestor. Um, yeah. In fact, if I wasn't on tour, um, I had been invited to do the Conscious Breathing Summit uh, over there in, I, I think it's wherever it is, Sweden or, or Switzerland. Yeah, somebody somebody just left me a voice note saying they were on the, their way to go work with him. He's so he's doing a lot of um, he's doing a lot of great work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's really big in into carbon dioxide and things like that. So um, I love talking with him about it. Um, but anyway, 
I, I love how we just transitioned into more of what you do, because that was the point of, <laughs> of having you on is just, you know, kind of talking about what you do. And I will just say this before we, we, we keep going is even for guys listening to someone who specializes in working with females, I think it's really good for people to know both sexes, right? So like, if you want to be a guy that is able to connect better with your loved one or with your with your family, other females, and understand them better, then do what Kristen is, is teaching. You know, check out what she's talking about. Because, you know, like if you're in a relationship and you really never understood why certain times of the of the season even, and not even just of the month, but like certain seasons can make a person act in a certain way. And if you kind of understand how they work better because you're listening to like the breath work and you can connect in a, in a special way. This is how you foster great relationships and maintain them if you so want to. So I think keep listening, everyone. <laughs> keep listening. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, we'll talk a bit about physiological females. I like to make that distinction in today's society that it's like when I'm speaking about females in correlation to breath or cold exposure or any of that, I typically, I'm, I'm always speaking about women, uh, physiological females. So you're born female and that's the hormone profile you're riding right now. And, um, and the same with males, right? There's a lot, a lot of differences and cases in between. And, um, yeah, like our, our, our world is fluid now. So I just like to make that specific call out. And then also, Perfect. uh, there's a ton of things that we can talk about that also are pertinent to men. So that's what they should stick around for because we should talk for a couple minutes about ice baths as well. Cause that's the raddest, Love newest, it. funnest thing. Love I mean, it's it. not new at all, but it's like, everyone's doing it now, um, uh, from Lady Gaga to, you know, the Kardashians. Yeah. Well, let's, so, get, let's get into it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. So, I love it. Yeah. So I do, uh, I do, I work a lot with breath, uh, with my clients. I work with, with predominantly females, but 80% females, but I do also have a program that's called Sherpa breath and cold S H E R P A, which is an acronym and also a describing word of a person who guides you up a mountain. And that program is all around breath and cold exposure. And uh, we talk a bit in it about the differences in women and, and, and breathing as well. I think, you know, the one thing I do want to mention, if we talk a bit about physiological females, when we start, there, there, there are two or three areas where women are different than men based on their hormone profile. And I'm speaking about reproductive years, which is like a segment of 40 years of, of our life as a woman. And then, you know, different times, seasons, like you said, but also seasons of life. So perimenopausal women are going to have a different hormone profile. Menopausal women will have a different hormone profile, all of which can be used like a superpower if we know what we're doing. And a lot of the, the things I train and talk to women about and some pro athletes is how we can utilize our cycle and our estrogen in our cycle to be able to build more muscle. And I'm always, it's getting more and more prevalent, this conversation around um, if you are in a, have a normal reproductive cycle and you're cycling every 28 to 34 days, uh, it's different for every woman, around day five or so for a, about a week between day five and day 15, right? I get that that's 10 days, but every woman's a little different. So there's about a week in there that we have an estrogen rise and then a big spike of estrogen. And women can train during that time and actually build like 30% plus more muscle than versus any other time of the month. Right. And so it's like we have to train smart by aligning ourselves and maybe our max lifting or our heaviest load slow, strong and steady during that week where we're doing, let's just say, the more intense strength training, less worry about explosive movement and cardio versus the other times of the month. And then, you know, this is the beautiful thing about being a woman. And we haven't been talking about this for 100 plus years like we have with men training or people, human beings training. So it feels sometimes like a lot, like how do I weave that in to a schedule when I'm used to doing my fitness strength and cardio or my periodization training, which is no pun intended, but mm -hmm. periodization in the sense of like four weeks over four weeks over four weeks. How do we layer that in and then layer in this other piece of knowledge as females, which is that when we're in our reproductive years that we have the third week of a cycle, we have more, and this is what you'll read in Breathing Cure if you haven't hit it already, we have more, we have a less of a opportunity to uptake oxygen. We just do not process and utilize carbon dioxide as well, about 25% less well, which means if you got wanted to get nerdy about the science, you need carbon dioxide to put oxygen in the tissues. So if we're uptaking carbon dioxide less well, or we're utilizing it less well, it means we can 25% uptake oxygen less well. It means we, it's harder for us to breathe. We're going to breathe more through the chest in that week three 
or so of the cycle. So as women, you can see where it becomes intricate and it's nice to have a coach to be like, hey, okay, let's start with training. How are you training? And then eating and can we update glucose well? And then how do we layer in breathing and, and all of that? Because if two females are going to run a triathlon or, uh, you know, participate in a triathlon, they, one of them might be in the optimal time for her cycle, right? And they're, let's say they're both really close, like, you know, first and second place. They're, one of them is more in an optimal time in her cycle. The other one isn't. That one who's in that time of her cycle, just by the estrogen spike she has or the dominance of the moment she's having in her month, has a better advantage on winning the race. Like if you're talking really about cool. even Steve and apples to apples. And that's really interesting to me. And that's not something that is talked about a lot. And especially when it comes to context of, you know, winning or getting your PR, like your best record or anything, it's, it makes one or 2%, 5% can make all the difference. So that to me, that's pretty true. fascinating. Yeah. And I, I just want yes. women to know that it doesn't have to be overwhelming, but it, it, there are ways that we can train um, and when we start to talk about perimenopause or menopausal years, women need to be strength training almost even more importantly and consistently than ever before, because we're losing muscle, we're losing bone density, all these things are happening and resistance training or heavy weights are the way to, to go. So that's the thing I'm quite often on a soapbox about of course. for women is learning how to align their cycle with all the things that they do from work, negotiation, sex life, you know, but really for me, it's around fitness, nutrition, and the way we are um, biohacking that, if you will. Yeah. When, when you started going down the, the, the conversation about um, uh, utilizing the, or optimizing your, your, um, your time throughout the, the month uh, of your cycle, utilizing that to do strength training, I, I kind of put my head into the body or the mind of the, the people out there that are like, Oh no, 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 no. But I, I don't want to lift. I was just thinking like that assumes that a person even is even believes in the power of lifting. Right. And, yeah. but, but what you're saying, you wrap that up very nicely because what you're saying obviously is that we should all be, you know, doing some kind of load to our system to create the change we want. And so you want to create even more profound changes then you should probably load it even more profoundly. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 And heavy is relative. And this is like a lot of women come to me. I just had a client. I've, I keep telling her story lately to, to people or other, other, other connections, but she came to me and was like, I'm not making any gains. I'm plateauing. I don't know what's going on. I can't even break a sweat. And I was like, what are you racking at the gym? Right. And like, she was like, no, I'm, I'm, it's heavy. I'm doing it. I'm doing like 15, 20 reps. It's heavy. It's, and I, and, and my biggest shift for her was like, heavy is relative, right? An 85 year old woman lifting like, five pound dumbbells overhead is could be heavy, but, but for someone else, it might be 50 pound dumbbells and barbells and, and resistance training and finding ways. This all precludes and assumes that you're going to find a safe way to do it. Right. And women who, if you're listening to this right now, or males that are training females or working out with their girlfriend or moms or whatever, lift heavy shit. Like it's, it's, you have to find what heavy is. And I, my biggest recommendation to women, because we tend to do too much cardio and too many reps is, and again, this is all general. Of course, if you're contextually training for something and you know, not anti what your coach is telling you, but contextually, we're, and generally speaking, we're not lifting heavy. We're not, we are more risk averse. So we like a man walks up to a barbell and racks weight and goes, does one rep and goes, Oh shit, I thought I could do three. And a woman goes up and racks weight and then is like, Oh, I did 10. Cool. And so it's like reducing the number of reps, getting to that six to eight before you have to stop and take a break before you do the next set and stacking weights on or trying the dumbbell or there's plenty of machines in the gym that we can do this really safely and say, okay, well, oh, actually that's too much. Okay. What's a little less than that? Or actually that's too little. I can do more. And so my client who is plateauing and stuck and couldn't figure it out, we reduced the number of times she's lifting the weight, like the reps. And then we... She put on, she went and did deadlifts, which, you know, women have strong lower bodies and glutes. And, you know, we got, we all got a peach these days. She's like, I put 80 more pounds on the bar for my deadlifts. And I was like, no wonder you're plateaued. Like, <laughs> right. she, she just went bam. Yeah. It's one of the things that came to my mind as you were explaining that is, you know, we, we should probably think of, more ways to slightly get out of our comfort zone while still staying, yeah. staying within a safe zone. 
right? Yeah. And, and I think that's a yeah. really good thing to kind of touch on because it's like the um, – uh, it's like the whole expression, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger or the hormetic effect. And that's similar to doing an ice bath or taking a cold shower or um, even exercise itself, right? It's not the the fact that we, you know, what, what we're lifting is what's giving us the benefits we want. It's actually recovering from that sort of stressor or that traumatic uh, thing that's happening to our tissues, right? So, uh, yeah. slightly getting out of your comfort zone makes all the difference. So whether that is running and, and I say slightly, right? Like you don't want to go from jogging to just sprinting all of a sudden, although I do think sprinting is good, but that's like jumping from only, you know, having a little bit of weight on a deadlift and adding 80 pounds. Right. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all, um, yeah. I like to call it progressive loading, but never yeah. overloading. So anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I like that refinement because progressive overload feels a lot like scarier or something to someone who doesn't really understand that. So progressive loading feels like a nice refinement to that. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, okay. We've, we've touched on a number of things. We've belabored the flex beam, but I'm certain there's going to still be questions. And so obviously anybody that is interested, I will put all the links to the best ways to get in touch with Kristen. Uh, also, if you're one of those people out there, I shouldn't even say just ladies, but if you're one of those people out there that want to talk to her more in depth, I, I would imagine there's ways that you can find out more. In fact, her website is called Warrior, Wom Warrior Woman Mode. And she has all these like speaking things on there. Um, I, I will have her list all of that at the very end of this episode. Um, but as most of you know, we as we start to wrap up the show, I have a couple questions that I want to make sure we fit in before I have to jump off and do my next podcast. Uh, but before we go yeah. to that, Kristen, is there anything else that you would like to touch on um, to kind of highlight what you do? Because you do way more than just represent Flex Beam and, and talk about breath work and ice baths. Like, what else do you want to maybe let Yeah, I mean, I do about? nutrition and, and fitness and biohacking predominantly with women, but I will just say that the thing that I think is important to say, because breath is a part of the cold exposure practice and, and whether you're doing cold showers or cryotherapy or ice baths, I think it's important to sort of note that the cold of the ice bath is the thing that really boosts longevity and really can, can shape shift your body. And by that, I mean, literally like body recompositioning and cellularly, if you're dealing with dis-ease states, I am not a <laughs> medical doctor, but we see so, I say we, because I speak to a lot, a lot of the global ice bath coaches and I have this program, Sherpa Breath and Cold, that's very, an intensive weekend to talk to people about the benefits and anyone who's listening to like Andrew Huberman, all these conversations around cold, there's more and more research of the benefits of this, but there are no two single practices that I have woven into my coaching and my life that make as drastic, rapid change to a combination of physiology and the way we confidently can live into our dreams as breath and cold exposure. They are just, and ice baths may or may not be scary to you if you're listening, but I want people to explore the world of cold because it is a super healer and a really big state shifter. And, and most importantly, it teaches you how to have the most mental toughness and resiliency to say, okay, cool. I am, I can leave the job I don't love and try the big scary thing and, and, and be successful at it. I can ask for help from someone. I can grow my practices and I can be the person that I really want to lean into the best version of myself that I dream of. And that may sound woo woo in some small way, but the reality is that we need a, a big dose of self belief in order to be successful on this life and this one life that we get. And I think learning how to breathe ourselves into a calm state or even into like a let's get fired up and go state yeah. or um, and getting into the cold really, it, it, it lets us understand our capacity for greatness. Wow. I mean, that is, that is probably one of the best ways to describe something that I think everyone could essentially do for free. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people get, like the cost of a few bags of ice. Yeah. 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 Or, I mean, obviously I don't want to get too, too deep into the whole temperature and length of time and all these things, but like, I've talked a lot about 
the various you util, you know utilizations of cold therapy right so you yeah. cold, you could start with a cold shower and while that oh for sure totally free and on the road sometimes i'm like that's all i got that's where's the ho exactly. i'm gonna go find the hotel and make sure the water is cold as possible <laughs> that's that's exactly right until we get more people listening to this kind of conversation and people start uh, having that everywhere so that we can all we can do it wherever we travel but i i agree yeah. with you um being able to do i mean there for a while actually when i was in la i was using the ice packs with the you know the 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 vest I mean, it was not uh -huh. ice packs dead on my skin, no. But, um, you know, I was wearing the ice packs because I was trying to come up with a portable version similar to what the portability of FlexBeam, right? And that yeah. got messy really quick. <laughs> it got messy. So totally. I tried all these like weirdo things like, yeah, floating, <laughs> bring, carrying ice packs that you stick in the hotel freezer to see if you can never get them to freeze, but they never do. Like, right, all right. It's so, such a nightmare. Now I just asked for a bathtub. Dude, I go to the hotel and I'm like, do you have rooms with a bathtub as part of the way I decide? Do you have a gym in the building? Do you have room with a bathtub? And then they always have an ice machine. You don't even have to pay for the ice. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah, like they're probably watching you on the cameras like, this woman is wild, you know? Uh, yeah, but, exactly. Anyway, um, okay, well, honestly, thank you for that. And people listening, I urge you to, to take what she said to heart because um, she's been, she's clearly a professional she is very experienced with what she's doing. I mean, you can tell that just by listening and or watching. Um, and I would just urge you to go and check out more of what she's doing because her Instagram is amazing. Her website is very cool. And um, and I, I realize now, Kristen, that um, we definitely got to have you back on on the, sh on the show because there's just so much that we did not get a chance to talk about. Um, but I want to yeah, respect. Yeah, so good. We jam, jam as long as we can. It's nice to spend time with you again. Yeah, exactly. Um, Okay, so the part of the show is where I asked two questions. I quickly prompted you on earlier, but I don't think you had a lot of time to think it through, so this could be interesting. Uh, but the first question is, uh, what are your top two pet peeves? Um, I'm going to say one that's sort of related to what I do, just because I'm going to bang the drum until people start listening, which is, <laughs> and not just people, but uh, my, one of my big pet peeves is... Um, I try to, with all the love and kindness that I say this, women will come to me and say, I'm just trying to get skinny. I'm just trying to get small. I'm not eating anything. It's not working. And I just, I'm really sick and tired of women specifically. And remember, that's the population I'm working with quite often, doing everything within their power to not use food as a fuel and to also work to make themselves even energetically, right? Even verbally, they're saying to me, I just want to be smaller. Mm. And it's it's a time in the world, I'd like to say, let's find another way to, to talk about that. We want to recomposition our body is a lot of times what I talk about, but just it's not a time to like be pushing ourselves into a mold and to be shrinking ourselves when the, let's say a hundred years we get on the planet, if we're lucky, it's a time to be expanding. It's a time to be you know, understanding that we can eat and have amazing meals and protein and, and be cognizant of the way that we are caring for our bodies, that the fuel we eat in our mouth is the fuel that fuels us. And so we should be cautious about what we're eating. Doesn't mean we can't have treats, but just the, I just want to be smaller thing. I want to find another way to have women hold that in their lives. Mm. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard thing to hear because a lot of times we're working on that and it's the rest of our life we're shrinking to. We're trying to fit inside the box of the of our partner, of our, our boss or of our and, and there is a place for weird. There's a place for being your own weird self. There's a place for expanding and and experimenting. And if people are like, that's weird, that's not for me, then then those people don't have to be for you. Wow, we, we have so many nuggets uh, that I'll be able to extract from this podcast. Wow, that that is so true. And I'm, and I'm happy that you said it in such an eloquent way because like, you're, you're so right. I, I get this. And of course, you know, at the end of the day, like you like you pointed out earlier, there are going to be some situations in which, like if you're working with a model, right? Like, okay, I'm not the one to tell them they, this is not healthy. I mean, I can, I can, you know, bring it up in a subtle way, but if I'm being hired to achieve a certain result, I'm going to help them with that. 
but I'm always happy that they come to me because at least I can provide them the options and let them know like with through their own experience that you know what this may not be the best route to be going down or maybe only do this while you're really young and you're and your body's growing i mean this would be the best time to expand as you say but you know it's a little bit easier to stay thinner or smaller if if, if that is the goal <laughs> when you're younger let's just talk about it in the fighting world right people have to make a weight for a runway at some point someone's like you got to fit in a size six that six that's your career cool you're doing a movie role. Awesome. What what the rest of the world doesn't understand is all of those professional athletes and models and movie stars have 19 coaches like you, Joshua, who know what's up, who are saying, we'll get to that weight safely and beautifully. And then I'm going to put you where you are needing to go the rest of the time. This is we see it as women who are householders, including me, like I'm no professional athlete and I'm no professional run. I mean, not a runway model yet, <laughs> but the. But the, the thing is, we see that and we think this is what this person is doing and looking like all the time. And we have to even, you know, this from per, the professional sports world, we're like training at a hard training, you know, four months of a training, uh, you know, section of our year. And then we have a rest period. And, and like, it's just totally on the same page with you. I just think it's, 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 it's so hard to watch when people are trying to do it 12 months a year all the time and just get tiny. Mm. And it's like, strong. We just want to be strong so we can take on everything that comes our way. Thank you for that. You know, I think that was so profound enough. Um, I think we can just leave it at that one because that was, yeah. that was spot on perfect. And I feel the, you know, you're very careful about how you say it. And I, I love the delicacy you have around it because I do know how important it is, but we also have to be mindful that we don't, um, you know, uh, turn in. You don't want to shame off. anyone right. either. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so thank you for being careful with that. Um, so the last one, I think, I think this is probably my favorite, maybe the favorite of the guests as well. But the last question is what is something you're most grateful for? What comes to mind? Um, I wonder if anyone has said this before. I feel like this, um, this answer would be common, but, um, it's like the most emotional answer. I think it's like you say it and you're like, is that really true? But it's really the truth. Like the thing I'm most grateful for in my life are the moments when I've experienced really challenging failure, mm -hmm. really putting myself to the test or feeling all the feels or having to understand how to cope with some kind of loss. It doesn't mean that I wanted it. Just the thing that I, whatever the thing is that I'm talking about because we all have lots of failures. I don't want in that moment for the thing to fail. But what I've really learned and I'm so grateful for on this journey is that sometimes in some places in your life, you're fighting and fighting and fighting so hard to make something happen that maybe isn't for you, that maybe the universe isn't wanting for you, maybe that your energy or whatever you believe that to be is like, it's not in your best interest. And so you have a failure or you have a loss and there needs to be a, a, a transition or a shift and it can suck and it can make you depressed and anxious and all the things. And I've had lots of that, um, even especially as a coach, right? I'm pushing my edges. So the small failures and the big failures, like learning how to, as Tony Shea would say, who's um, passed on at this point from Zappos is like fail faster. And I, I really try to not knock myself down or get up, at least get up and dust myself off more quickly. And I know that I wouldn't be the person that I am right now. And I wouldn't be able to help people in the same way that I do if I haven't, if I hadn't had big failures in my life. And so mm. I imagine there's someone else who feels like lots of people will talk oh. about that we learn the most from failure, but that's what I'm most grateful for. It's so painful to say it, right? You don't want it it's, to be true, but it's no, true. That's, that, that is, again, profound, beautiful. I, I don't, I, I think you may be the first one to, to say it in that way for sure. The only person that would have even come close to talking about that is my buddy Ben Hart, who has mm. the book, um, I think it's called The Zero Game or, or Starting From Zero, something like that. Um, but it's all about like, like learning from failure. So I imagine that yeah. at some point we may have discussed it, but the way you explain it is so true. And it goes, uh, sometimes it kind of goes back to the hormetic effect. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I think we, I know we talked about this on the show with Ben, but it's like when you can reframe what a failure is in the first place, right? Like a lot of people think failures are the thing to stay away from. I don't want to fail. I want to fail. But like, how do you, how do you grow? You know, it's like, I have, yeah. I'm looking over here to the left and I've got these dead plants and 
like, how do I come back from that? Well, it, if they, if I came back from my trip, my tour, and the, those plants were just thriving, then I would have thought, oh, I'm doing something right. But the fact that they're dead, <laughs> I either have to throw them out or do yeah, something. I'm going to change the soil. I'm going to water. I'm going to cut the bottoms. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do Bingo. the next thing. Bingo. Yeah. So thank you for that, Kristen. Wow. Oh, I wish we had more time. Um, but no, it's uh, been so lovely to just have a chance to chat with you to nerd out about how much we love the flex beam and red light therapy. And I, I also just want to honor you and the work that you're doing in the world. You are on the go all the time. I know what that feels like. And you always have a way of making it not feel like a grind, but really mm. feel like you're in your highest energy you're in your highest self. I will never forget when I was at your place and I was like, Come on. He's spinning. He's got the whole water set up and the whole thing. He's like remineralizing water for me. And then like cut to a year later when I'm like, oh my God, that was so amazing. He was so right. I'm like remineralizing my water. I'm like Berkey. I'm distilling it. I'm like doing all the things. And it's it's made a big difference. So you've been a leader in my life in so many ways as well. And just like uh, I, I keep my eye on you and I'm so appreciative of the way that you show up in the world. Thank you, Kristen. Wow. Oh, I've got so much, uh, so, so much lovely positive emotion happening right now i'm going to go into this next interview yeah. like on a different vibration which is great um i love it good, so good. Bef before we wrap can you just let people know the best ways to find out more about you and all the lovely things you're doing in the world yeah for sure um my my handle on instagram is the same name as like my women's programs warrior woman mode w-a-r-r -R, warrior not warrior <laughs> mode like a la mode i always say <laughs> so warrior woman mode and um warrior woman mode dot com SherpaBreathAndCold.com is where my breath and cold training is. And it's like everything navigates off WarriorWomanMode.com. It's pretty easy to find me. Um, I have WellPower Podcast, a lot of different names, a lot of different fun brands working in the optimization space. But uh, you can find me. Instagram is probably the best way. Of course. And as always, I will link everything as, as best I can. Honestly, everyone, keep your eye on what Kristen's got going on because I sure am. And uh, I want to thank you, Kristen, for your time. And uh, thank you for all that you do. And I hope we can catch up again and not wait three years or however long it's been. <laughs> I know. Okay. No more quarantine. All right, cool. Stay in touch. If you're in Austin, let me know, okay? Ah, that's right. Yes, yes. Maybe soon. Walk the talk, Bye. talking facts. Move like me, but I move a little fast. Make my move here to last. Fasten these seat belts. I'm coming past. Take care of me. Longevity. Half my biology. Better believe. Walk in the talk. So my and body connected. Better come give us a listen. Better come give us a minute or two. Open the box up. We giving you tools. Giving your engine the fuel that it needs. Breathing into it. It's autoimmune. Make a connection. We're stronger than two. Making us one of a kind of a few Work on the mind, but show me your moves If you do what you say, you know what to do Yeah